back here live at Stanford University. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and this is exclusive coverage of the Excel Partner Stanford University Symposium 17th uh, annual event where they gather the top minds, entrepreneurs. Essentially, it's all the portfolio companies of Excel Partners and all their ecosystem. Scholar program. And this is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. And my guest here is entrepreneur Dax Da Silva and John Locke from Excel Partners. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, so you got to watch the microphone a little bit, lean closer, so we can hear the background noise still coming out. So, sure. So. Um, so, Doss, tell me about Lightspeed. You're the founder, CEO. Yep. Um, you guys are taking on kind of a whole nother generational thing. You know, it's, right. it's classic uh, opportunity recognition, new consumer experience. Talk about your company, what your value proposition is. Yeah, I mean, we started in 2005, and, and uh, you know, our original product was uh, you know, bringing retail POS to the Mac. Uh, and we sort of rode that that crazy wave that Apple had growing in the 2000s and uh, grew 1900% in five years. We, we we went without investment for for seven years, and then we met it, uh, met up with Excel and uh, took an investment uh, last year. Um, and and you know since uh, since our original days, we've kind of expanded the platform to really respond to the way retail is transforming these days. You know, retail is. Um, you know they need to stay relevant in this age of e-commerce. You know they need to get, get give customers a reason to get off the couch and into the store. Uh, and so Lightspeed's engaging customers or allowing sales reps to engage with customers on iPads and mobile units. Um, but still, great back office and inventory management tools on a Mac and bridge to e-commerce as well. Uh, with retail our web was store. supposed to be dead with the web. The web was supposed right. to kill retail, it, but it's now transforming destination based. What are some totally. of the trends in retail? Well, you know what's what's really funny is that some of the biggest e-commerce brands are opening retail stores. And Apple's uh, Apple never had to open a retail store, but they've done. You know, they've grown their empire by opening about 500. <laughs> so, you know, retail. You know, what, what is the magic with the retail store? Why do, uh, you know, why do they? Why do they persist? Um, I think that the interesting thing I've learned talking to retail CEOs over the last year is that uh, you can't tell the brand narrative uh, uh, over the web. You know, uh, the brand narrative for a store is really told. Um, for, sorry, the, the, the brand narrative is really told inside the store. So, uh, so that, that is very important, and that customer experience is important for people to have that impression of, of the brand. I want to bring John in from uh, Excel in a minute, but I want to ask Das one more question. Das one more question about like just some legacy brands. Let's just take you know Macy's or some big brand, yeah. big storefront, a lot of legacy, generations of retail. They get a web, they have very successful web presence. Sure. All of a sudden, it's just so easy to move to mobile. They think, right? So, they think, so yeah. we've seen some you know some bumps in the road for these classic sure. e-commerce vendors. Talk about those kinds of big players. How do you see them, right. and how do you uh, solve that need? So, I mean, we're in about 11,000 stores, but the, you know, the stores that are really leveraging the Lightspeed experience are, are, the, are the, the small innovative retail chains, uh, let's say in Soho or Williamsburg, where we have 1,000 of our 11,000. The big retailers would love to have this, this, this customer experience, but what, what, what the innovative, you know, nimble guys are doing, but um, you know, they've got all this legacy uh, ERP, uh, you know, all these back-end systems uh, that they have to tie in, uh, tie into, and so you know, we're, we're having some success with, with with helping them move into you know the modern age of retailing and engaging with their customers in new ways, but it's definitely a bigger challenge uh, for for some of the you know the national brands. So John, John's a uh, young gun at Excel, uh, <laughs> Forbes under thirty uh, recently. Um, so you know you're the new generation, right? So you've got to look at you have your, you, you must see things that the older guys like Bud Colligan might not see. <laughs> you know, been around the block. Uh, Bud will be on later. Bud, that's a shout out to you. Um, but you know, Angry Birds, obvious success. You see things like that. These are cultural but generational defining. Where you know new brands are emerging that you know from entrepreneurs out there, and and there are new things that young guys are getting. Young the young generation, like they don't read the papers like these. They're online all the time. So how they're connecting and all this is part of a new generation. So what do you say to the folks out there that want to kind of have an insight into this preferred user expectation? And the web was easy. I want to self-serve, search some things, find what I'm looking for, navigate. That was Google great. Yeah. That's kind of check. I've uh, yep. been there and you know Google will still be around, but the new model is different. Can yep. you share your insight and vision and what well, you're seeing I, I for know, trends? I don't know if it's uh, it's much of a vision, but I, I think just uh, trends. The, the, there's just so much happening from obviously a mobile engagement perspective, right? I mean, it's just um, I I do uh, more shopping on on uh, my mobile device than I do on tr traditional online commerce on my on my PC these days. So so that has obviously a lot of um, uh, impacts on 
uh, uh, industries ranging from gaming, as we see with Angry Birds, to payments with, with Braintree and, and powering a number of mobile commerce sites, to uh, what DAX is doing at Lightspeed, which is enabling retailers to use these mobile devices and tablets and these sorts of things to change the way that their stores look so they get people out from behind the cash register and, and talking and engaging with, with, uh, with customers that are at the store. So, um, I, again, I don't, I don't think mobile, I'm the first one to say mobile, but um, it has so many different applications, not just on the consumer side, but which we hear a lot about. I mean, everyone's like, hey, check, you know, that's obvious. But also on the enterprise side. But I mean, the user experience, I mean, think about that for a second. You just want to drill down on that. So you shop a lot on your mobile device, but yeah. we were just talking about the retail experience. The Apple stores are packed more than ever. So yeah. that line is blurring between my virtual space buying yep. and the, the physical presence of retail. Yep. Right? I mean, do you agree? And how would you kind of bet that out? Well, I think... Um, and, and, and again, bringing it back to what DAX is doing, um, I think what we're seeing on the retail side, and Apple's done a phenomenal job of this, is that uh, retailers are starting to take some of the tricks that e-commerce guys have been using for a long time. So, um, you know, every e-commerce site that we're involved with has the traditional, you know, conversion funnel. How many people came to the site? Uh, what did they do when they got to the site? How many of those people actually bought something? And we're starting to see retailers use some of these same techniques in the store. Right, so store counting, you know, seeing how many people actually check yeah. out, um, and to really care about analytics because they have to be relevant in this day and age when, when it's very easy to shop on Amazon or any, anything else. And so um, we're, we're really seeing retailers striving for sort of next-gen analytics type things, uh, which yeah. we offer at Lightspeed, uh, and, and really think that kind of offline retail is, is great. Give us the update on Lightspeed. How many employees, how much funding did you get from these guys? Yeah, we did a $30, uh, $30 million Series A last, uh, last summer. Um, you know, and you and, were profitable beforehand. Yes, we were. I mean, for we were self-funded for for the first seven years uh, of our existence. That's a theme and, here at Excel. Yeah. I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs <laughs> right. self-funded, big A round. Right. But I mean, we went from you know since since that investment, we've gone from about forty-one to eighty-five people in a year. Um, so comfort that you can scale surprised up. Surprised I don't have more gray hair. You look good. But yeah, meetings. You know, a <laughs> couple more. Probably two more. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's been a been, been a great ride, and I think that. You know, for a Montreal company, um, you know, we, I, you know, we, we did some great things in our first seven years, but we're definitely, you know, had our uh, nose to the grindstone and building, uh, you know, very focused on ourselves and, and our reseller channel and so on. I think the great thing about the Excel investment's been um, opening up, um, you know, sort of our, our 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 network to Silicon Valley and to. How did you bump into the Excel investment? Did they call you? What? How did this all? How did it all go down? Because you're in Montreal, it's like right, yeah. Silicon Valley is a place here, but yeah, Silicon Valley's opening up. We've seen a lot of investments. I see Australia, all over right. the world now. But well, I just I bumped into John in a bar in Montreal. No, <laughs> no that was after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the bar the call. Beers that happened. Uh, has more alcohol content <laughs> in uh, Montreal. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I think that there was a discovery call early uh, in. Like, late in 2011, then they, they came to visit our booth at the N at NRF, which is the big retail trade show that happens. Um, and I think that uh, they saw the difference between what, what Lightspeed was trying to pitch uh, in comparison to the legacy players. Um, and uh, we just kind of completed one level of our platform. We just rolled out iPad. So we had sort of all the elements. It was kind of a, a, great, a great time for us to... So you were showcasing to, your mobile app as for the, as for the, for the uh, POS point of sale. Yeah, like we were showcasing uh, basically kind of almost a completed platform at that point with Mac, iPad, uh, mobile, and e-commerce, and APIs. So we sort of have the, had the whole thing at the, at the time. So it was a great time to sort of entertain these these uh, discussions. And um, I went on a little vacation to Argentina. I was back. Uh, John was at the office and you know we sort of did a term sheet a few weeks later it was just a really good chemistry and uh, great, great alignment on the way we view uh, the transformation on that uh, and in retail and also the Appleization um, you know the, the success that, uh, that Apple was having when was uh, that closed that was uh, last oh, that year, year and a half June nice. last June yeah. We get really excited about these businesses that um, have been built outside of Silicon Valley. Um, you know, Dax in Montreal, Bill Reddy in, with Braintree in Chicago, Angry Birds is in Helsinki. So a lot of times, you know, if you haven't done a huge Series A like is typical in the Valley, um, you got to be lean and you got to you got to make money right away, right? And that instills a pretty um, a good culture. And so we try to, as much as we can, uh, get outside of. Well, it's our a lot easier now when you have entrepreneurs who could cobble together their own funding either through customer acquisition, yeah, and yeah. their own 
team, that kind of validates and kind of de-risks it a little bit for the VCs, but you guys also see the growth and want to put more cash in to grow yeah. it. Is that, did you feel the same way about that? Or? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, to, to, to date, we haven't, we haven't uh, I think we've, we've leveraged more uh, Excel's network and expertise than we have really touched the cash. You know, the cash, use any of the cash, the, the, the cash <laughs> is for, I think, for things we'll we're looking into. <laughs> yeah, things we're looking into now with how to so Silicon Angle got plenty of openings <laughs> for our, uh, we, don't, we don't have banner ads on this site. Um, so, but the cash gives you comfort. I mean, people yes, employ you see yeah. scale. You have now an option to put more gas on the um, on the fire and grow yeah. that. Uh, invest in it and bring in new teams and so on. So, yeah. that's the kind of thing we're looking at now. But I think uh, you know, in the first year, it's just been opening our eyes to to, to different uh, ne di different networks that we we didn't have previous. So, John, what do you get excited about looking at you know this new generation of, of kids? My oldest is 18, going to go to college next year, and it's so funny to watch even anyone between the ages of 15 and 20, and everything is all about what their window into the network is. I'm, right? I'm so, old compared to that. So, so. yeah, <laughs> be looking up to you. But you know, this is a whole new generation. What, what gets you excited when you look at as this whole new plethora of technology, cloud, mobile, social, big data? What 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 gets you excited? Well, I think we we. Um, Obviously, enterprise is sort of back in vogue, right? And we had a lot of people talking about it, and there's sort of these ebbs and flows of things. But we get really excited about these um, sort of picks and shovels businesses that are powering um, what that generation is doing from just a kind of uh, so consumer tool. purchasing perspective. So tools, right? Tools. Your brain tree is a tool for payment processing. These guys are a tool yeah. for retail management. Obviously, on growth shop. market. Tooling with growth. That, that's right, in, in these sorts of categories. So it's it's always a little bit difficult to pick what you know the, the fad of the moment is on the consumer side and what people that age are going to do and want to use over the long term. Um, we really like these, these tool type businesses. Okay, Dexter Silva, congratulations from Montreal. Always a great city to go to. Uh, not in the winter, but spring's beautiful <laughs> there. It's right. a, a fantastic city. Of course, I'm a Bruins fan, Boston Bruins. That is, not the Canadians, but again, congratulations, <laughs> John, great to be on theCUBE, guys, thanks for coming on. Thanks, thanks for having us. Hey, this is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of uh, Stanford, Excel, Symposium, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.